I'm about to teach you how to steal other people's songs, like an artist. I'll probably get a lot of comments saying, oh, but you can't steal, you're gonna get a lawsuit and that's bad. But the thing is, if that's the case, if you're gonna get a lawsuit, then you're not stealing right. It wasn't up until I started stealing like an artist that I really started to improve because I was able to get perspective on what sounds good in professional tracks. Does that make sense? So. Anyway, let's steal other people's songs. All right, so here's the thing. Stealing like an artist is not plagiarism. Obviously, we're not just going to literally rip off and copy other people's songs. Instead, it looks more like this. Let's say you have a track, okay? This is a reference track that somebody else has made. Stealing like an artist would be taking small parts of the track that you really like, then putting your own spin on these things, and it kind of gets filtered through your own production knowledge, and then you basically create a completely original track. Now, preferably, you'd want to use multiple reference tracks it helps you be more creative and it also helps ensure that you're not just ripping people off so let's say you like the lead they use in the drop as well as the baseline now you take those concepts and you make your own track obviously there's a specific way you got to do this so that you make sure you're not plagiarizing but anyway let's make a track okay so this is the reference I'll be using this is what it sounds like I'll link this track in the description and make sure to go follow these guys right here. But anyway, if we listen to it again, you can hear that pad in the drop as well as the bass line. And those are the two main concepts that I want to take from this track. So let's do it. Let's build it out right now. Let's get a kick. Clap, of course. Let's do this one. This one too. And this one. Perfect. And this is a little bit weird, but one thing I've been doing recently is putting just a little bit of disperser on my kick. Just a very, very small amount, and it kind of gives it more punch. You just have to be careful with this because it can kind of mess up your kick sometimes. Let's get a ride. All I'm doing right now is just laying out the foundation, and we can sidechain the ride to make the kick sound more powerful as well. All right, so the last thing, a very simple hi-hat. All right, so now we have the drums. And we might as well just add a bass line now. I'm gonna use this preset, and by the way, you can get this sample pack in the link in the description. It's the FL Mastery Academy. Let's go D sharp. So what if we made this go all the way up and then kind of slide down to the lower octave? Yeah, something like that. Let's hear it in the track real quick. Maybe we can edit these notes. Yeah, that's a little bit better. And let's do one more bass layer. Okay, that's good. So like I said, for this reference track, I like the bass. What the heck? So like I said, for this reference track, I like the bass line as well as the pads and the drop. So I guess we should go ahead and add some pads. This one right here. Make sure it's in key. I like the distorted texture. All right, so this is starting to sound pretty cool. And you know what? I might add chroma to these pads. This is just gonna retune it and make sure everything's in key because the pads sound a little bit dissonant. So I'll just put this to D sharp pentatonic minor. Sounds a little less dissonant. I'm literally just adding random pad samples that I have in my sample library. Okay, so this is starting to sound pretty sick now. Obviously, like I said, I got the idea to add these pads in the drop from our reference track. And we can just check to make sure that our track is not too close to this one. Nah, it's completely fine. All right, so I'm gonna organize this a little bit and maybe let's add some chord stabs. So there's this one preset that I really like from one of my old sample packs. This one right here. You can make a chord stab out of this. There we go. And this more bright chord stab will layer very well with the pads. And kind of follow the rhythm. Let 
Maybe we could add one more chord layer, like a detuned saw or something like that, just to fill it up more. Okay, that's good, but I don't want it to be super heavy. Perfect. And maybe a bass stab or something just to fill it up a little bit more. And the cool thing is all of these pads have chroma on them. So if I wanted to, I could just go ahead and change the pitch of it and it's still going to be in key. So all I'm going to get is just some different tones. And I guess I'll just copy this over. And I'll split these, organize this a little bit, and we can make a different section. Maybe we can switch up the bass in the second section. Perfect. Add some ear candy, some lasers or something. Alright, let's try something. I'm gonna do some weird saw lead. Might sound a little bit annoying right now, but just, just wait. Maybe we can route the velocity to the level, so that way we can use these down here. Make these quieter. Alright, let's try that. Maybe we can add a crystallizer, and this is kind of like granular synthesis, basically. Sounds a little bit messy, but it's cool. Interesting, let's try that. I gotta sneeze. <laughs> that sounds pretty sick, I'm not gonna lie. I kinda like how it's basically just a normal saw. All I did was just add kind of an extra detuned layer to add a little bit of depth. And all of this basically just came from our reference track. Remember, we got the ideas from the reference track, we used some of the concepts, and now we have this idea. Let's make some chords for the second bass line. Okay, so we've basically built out the main idea. And we can literally just go from here. If we wanted to, we could pull in more reference tracks for inspiration and steal like an artist from those tracks. But honestly, I'm just going to keep going with this. We need like a fill or something. Something like that. Maybe a crash. I literally have a call in five minutes, so I gotta be fast. So there's a little bit of empty space in between these pads and these chords. So maybe we can add some reverb swoops or something. Something like this. All right, that sounds good. It fills up a little bit more space. Let's add some more lasers. I hear this specific pattern in my head. All right, I'll go ahead and organize this. All right, so there we go. I think we just need to add a few more details to this. It's a pretty unique concept as well that obviously came from this reference track. I'm gonna add this bass shot right here in this section. It'll kind of cut out the main bases and I think it'll sound pretty cool, especially if we just cut out the rest of this stuff like this. And maybe we could even make a new lead here. There's this one particular preset I have. It's this one. Very trance sounding lead. And maybe we can just copy this whole thing over like this. Just adding a few more details, of course. And then finally, let's just add a tom or something. Just adds some detail to this clap fill. Okay, so now we have a really cool drop for a full track. And the main concept literally just came from this reference track. So 
So this sounds very sick. I love it. The mix is a little bit messy right now, so I'll come back to it later and fix that up. But as you can tell, stealing like an artist is one of the best tools that we can use as producers or artists because it allows us to create new concepts and new tracks just by kind of stealing other people's concepts that they have in their tracks. Does that make sense? And obviously every now and then you want to make sure and go back to the reference track and just make sure it's not too similar to what you've produced. But comparing these two, they pretty much sound like just two completely different tracks, which is exactly what you want. And by the way, if you want to learn FL Studio as fast as possible and produce some amazing music, get a community of producers who are always by your side, a ton of sample packs, presets, you know how it is. I said this at the end of every single one of my videos. If you want to, go check the link in the description. I know you'll absolutely love it. Make music now and to thank yourself later. Peace.